Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be talking about my top five favorite foundations. This has been a video I've been wanting to do for a while because I will often get asked questions based on many of you seeing a number of my videos and I'm using different foundations and you're asking which one is your favorite. So I have brought together my top five favorite. I love all of them equally. I just use them on different days depending on what I need out of that foundation for the day. Now, all of the five that I'm sharing with you today have several things in common. One is they look beautiful on mature skin. I'm 43, so I'm getting up there and I have fine lines. I have enlarged pores and I do, <laughs> trust me. Sometimes you see people say, oh, I've got large pores and you're going, where are those pores? I've got them. And my skin tends to be combination a little more oily during the summer. So all of these foundations work and stay throughout the day. I may get shiny with several of them at a certain point and I'll tell you with each one when that is, but they all remain intact and if I powder or blot, they will continue to wear very well, comfortably through 10, 12, 14 hours. Now the other thing that they all have in common is they all work wonderfully all by themselves. To me, a good foundation is a foundation that does not require a primer, a setting spray in order for it to perform. Now, all of these foundations I have used with various primers, various setting sprays, various powders, and they all still work great. But all of these I actually prefer using without a primer, without a setting spray, and they work beautifully. My favorite powder to set them all is my one of my all-time favorite powders in general, and that is the Too Faced Peach Perfect mattifying loose powder. I have the translucent shade. You saw this in my empties video and you know I said this is something I will always have in my collection. Um, this just does a beautiful job of lightly setting the makeup. It doesn't add any coverage but it works beautifully with all these foundations. Now the next thing that all of these have in common is they have buildable to full coverage. So it doesn't mean that you have to always wear them at their fullest coverage level. If you apply them with a sponge, you're gonna get a little more of a diffused finish or a little lighter weight coverage, but all of them are buildable up to full coverage in my experience. And with that full coverage comes the last thing they have in common is that they do not look cakey or mask-like on the skin. And ironically, all of the definitions or the details on the websites about each one of these foundations, every single one of them contains either the phrase skin-like or non-mask-like. So apparently, that's what I like in a foundation and I think a lot of you do as well. So now without further ado, let's go ahead now and I'm gonna jump into the first foundation and I'm gonna share them with you in the order of the one that I have the most experience with down to number five, which is the newest to join this collection. So let's go ahead and get started with foundation number one. Foundation number one is the EX1 Invisawear Foundation. This retails for $16.50. You have to order this from the UK, so that is one little drawback, but I've never had any issues. I have ordered probably five or six bottles of this, and um, it's come, I order it through lookfantastic.com, which I will link down below. But this is 30 mils, which is basically one ounce of product product. It comes with a pump. The bottle's plastic, but it looks nice. It's an airless pump, so it works really well to kind of move up as you use the product until the end. And I think that helps keep it fresher because there's no air getting into the product. Now this one does not contain any SPF. Now the finish, even though it's dewier, it is not shimmery or anything like that. So there's no glitter. You're not going to look in certain lights and see shimmer, um, but it just melts into the skin. It's more of like 
almost like a gel-like formula, but it just becomes one with your skin. I love foundations like this because I don't feel like it's sitting on top of my skin. This one, I will about six to eight hours, depending on the heat and temperature of the day, six to eight hours, um, and then I'll probably need to do a little bit of powder. Um, this one does, it says it's true color pigments with light diffusers to help give you a perfect finish, so, or a perfecting finish, and I agree with that. Even though it is more of a luminous, dewy finish, I don't feel like it emphasizes texture or pores. Now the shade range is slightly limiting. It's 16 shades. Originally this foundation was created to help those of us with more yellow tones to their skin, but they have also added ones that have more pink undertones as well. But all of that being said, I love it. I love how it sets down on the skin and just truly does cover well, but looks very skin-like. Now, sometimes what I like to do with this foundation, if I want to add even more longevity of wear time, I will actually mix it with the next foundation that I'm gonna share with you. And that is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. Now, this comes in at a whopping 1.6 ounces. I couldn't believe it when I was looking at this. I thought that cannot be right. So 1.6 ounces. I have three different shades of this and I mean it does truly take a long time to use. It has a pump on it which I love and this one is infused with peach and sweet fig cream and that is the scent. So that is one drawback that many people don't like is it does have a fragrance but personally I think it smells really good. It does dissipate very quickly. And of course the scent works really great with the peach scent of this powder too, just saying. But back to the foundation. Now this one says that it's transfer resistant. And I would say that is true. For me, transfer resistance hangs in there until my skin starts getting a little oily underneath. This one does help control oils, so this is a very good one if you are combination to oily, um, but I have also recommended this to Kathy who was on here. She is more of a drier skin type and it's worked great for her. It does not emphasize pores or fine lines. Um, here I'll show you it uh, kind of this shade is my darker shade. This is sand, so it doesn't quite match me now, but you get the idea. So this one, it feels a little bit thicker on the skin than the EX1, but it sets and dries down on the skin and it remains fairly budge proof throughout the day. So this one, I can get a good eight to 10 hours and then I'll probably need to powder, but again, it hangs on there even past that. And as I said, this is great on its own or mixed in with this if I want just a slightly dewier finish. Now lastly, the finish on this one is a little more matte-like, but I would say a natural matte. It's not a powdery matte look, so I think it's still very flattering on mature skin. And this one retails for $36, and there is no SPF in this one. Next up is the IT Cosmetics Confidence in a Compact Foundation. Now this even has a longer title. It says Skin Transforming Full Coverage Solid Super Serum. Wow, that is a mouthful. <laughs> this retails for $38 and it comes in 0.63 ounces. Now, before you think that this is a cushion foundation, let me open this up and I will show you it is not. So because of that, I think you actually get longer wear out of one of these than a cushion foundation. Now this one is super unique. So as you can see, it's not sponge like at all. It almost feels hard, but what happens, this is a serum foundation. So this you can actually use instead of moisturizer, SPF, I'll tell you about that in a second, and foundation kind of all in one. So it is very reminiscent of a CC cream. However, 
I personally actually prefer this over the It Cosmetics CC Cream. So I love that one as well, but this one has edged that one out for me, and I'll tell you why. So when you rub your brush or your sponge in it, it activates the serum, and you will see on my finger here, it has this beautiful, just dewy finish. Now with that though comes absolutely full coverage. It though sinks into the skin so it does not look like you have a thick face of makeup. Now it only comes in seven shades. However, because this soaks into the skin, it does something crazy. It gives you full coverage, but it meshes with your skin tone and somehow a broader range of skin tones can work for each shade. So I do wish that they had more offerings there, but like I said, I have found this a very forgiving shade range. Um, now, as far as the SPF, this is SPF 50. Oh my goodness, isn't that amazing? It's UVA, UVB, and it's a physical sunscreen. So it is not the chemical sunscreen. And that is why, therefore, I feel like it is super accommodating for those of us with sensitive skin. Now this says it has the same skincare benefits that you get when you use the Confidence in a Cream Moisturizer from It Cosmetics. And those benefits are, I'm going to read this too because it just sounds amazing. So it has anti-aging armor rejuvenating concentrate that's activated upon contact to immerse your skin in moisture, restore visible radiance, reduce the look of pores, discoloration, lines and wrinkles, and improve the look of firmness. Which one of you doesn't want all of those things, right? And I just have to say, I do think that many of those things happen. It does cover any discoloration. It somehow, even though it has a more luminous finish, it does not emphasize pores. In fact, disguises them. Now this one of all of them, I do have to make sure I set this very well. At about six hours, I'm starting to see a lot of shine. If I powder again, it will last me for several more hours. So if you are somebody who wasn't real thrilled about the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Stick, this is my preference over that. I think the finish is even more beautiful, the coverage is even better, and the skincare benefits are there. Now this one does have a slight fragrance, so that's something to be aware of, but it is not off-putting and it dissipates almost immediately when you put it on the skin. But again, a huge favorite of mine and one that I love using when I want kind of the SPF, the moisture, all of that wrapped up in one product. Next up is the one and only drugstore foundation in this collection, and it has been a newer love, but I have fallen head over heels for this, and it's the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. You've seen this in a couple of videos recently, and this is 1.01 .01 ounces, 30 mils, basically. It comes with a dropper, and I have just been so impressed by this. It is the lightest weight of all the ones that I'm sharing with you, and yet it still provides that full coverage. It melts into the skin, and this one, I would say, out of all five, is the most matte-like finish. So even more matte-like than the Peach Perfect, but it's not drying. I don't feel like it sinks into the lines or emphasizes any dry patches. Um, if you're a drier skin type, you might not, I would say you probably don't even need to powder with this one, but you can see it right there smoothed in. It just sinks right into the skin and I love that. So this one is retails for $10.99 at Ulta and if any of you shop Ulta, you know you can often find many of these brands on sale. So I think I got this for maybe $7.99 when I purchased it. And it they have expanded their shade range, thankfully. it's They're now up to 18 shades. If you go into Ulta, they only carry a few of the shades, but online they carry all of the rest. Now, while this boasts of up to 24 hour wear time, 
Um, I'm gonna say for me personally, I can get a good eight to 10 hours with this before needing to powder and then I can powder and still get several more hours after that. I don't think I would say 24 hours. Maybe if you used a real gripping primer and this and a setting spray, then maybe, but who needs their foundation to last 24 hours? Not me. But overall, I do love this foundation. If you want something that is super inexpensive, but yet performs really well on the skin, and you are more of a combination skin type, I think you would love this. Now this does not have any SPF in it, but I think it's still worth it, especially at $10.99. Okay, so rounding out my top five is the newest to my collection and the most expensive. It is the YSL All Hours Foundation. Now, when I received this from YSL through Oxily, I have to say I was actually set against liking it. I did not want to like it because I knew how expensive it was. And I have tried several other high-end foundations like the Marc Jacobs one, the Hourglass one. I've tried others from Lancome and I just did not like them. Not only did I not like them for the price point, but I just didn't all out like the performance or how they looked on my skin. So when I put this on my skin the first time, I was like, I'm not gonna like it, I'm not gonna like it. And I loved it. And it has continued to perform in successive days in a row just exactly the same and I love that. Now, now this one is SPF 20. It is octanoxate, which is the chemical sunscreen, so not a huge fan of that. However, my sensitive skin has not reacted one bit, so I'm grateful for that. You get 0.84 fluid ounces, but it retails for $54. Oh, so it better be amazing, right? Well, it does come with a pump and I will show you in a moment a demo, but I only require one and about a half a pump and that will give me full coverage. So in a moment, I am gonna show you a demo of me applying this foundation. Now I will link down in the description box below videos of me applying all of the other foundations. So I have shown you all these other foundations but I have not yet shown you this one in action. So let's go ahead and jump to the demo and I'll explain what I love about this as we go along. So starting off with one and a half pumps on my little makeup palette here. And this is my favorite type of brush to apply it with, kind of more of a semi-dense, brush that has kind of a rounded top to it. So I will dip the brush in the foundation and smooth it on and you can just see the spreadability of this foundation. It seems like it's going to be thicker initially when you pump it out but it spreads beautifully and thins out and gives you a really skin-like look. Now you can see what amazing coverage that gives, and yet it is not emphasizing my pores or my fine lines at all. This is a very buildable foundation. So at the very end, I will use kind of what remains and maybe tap that over a dark spot or any other spot that I've got on my face. But overall, it is just a beautiful finish and again, looks very skin-like, but my skin tone looks nice and even, and it just has a very soft finish. It's not matte, it's not dewy, but just beautiful. And then of course, I like to set it with the Peach Perfect powder, and I think that just gives it a really nice finish. Now this one is available in 40 shades. So if you are somebody who really has a hard time finding your shade of foundation, I think you might be in luck with this one. Now it boasts that it is transfer free and I would say yes up until my skin starts getting a little bit oily. Now this one for me stays probably the longest shine free and then when it starts getting a little shiny, it's almost like that effect that dry skin types try to achieve with their dewy or foundation. So it does kind of start taking on a little bit of more of a dewy finish, 
but it is nothing that's oily or slick looking. After about 10 to 12 hours, if I need it to go further, then usually I'll break out the powder and add that. Now, it does also boast 24 hour wear. I'm sorry, this would not last on me personally for 24 hours. Even though it does have an oil controlling formula, it's not controlling that much oil that it's gonna make it 24 hours. But like I said previously, who needs their foundation to last for 24 hours? Not me. So all of those things aside, the other con aside from the price is it does have fragrance added. Now, I again don't feel like it's super off-putting and actually I feel like the fragrance I was trying to determine what it is because it sounds it smells familiar and I think it's cucumber so it smells um, just a little bit fresh kind of refreshing but again it dissipates quickly and it doesn't hang around and also more importantly it does not irritate my skin all right guys, so that wraps up this video. I hope that that was helpful for you. If you are on the hunt for your new perfect foundation, hopefully I introduced you to several to look into that might work for you. And I do feel like each one of these performs dependably from day to day. So many times I can have one experience one day with a foundation and the next day I'll do the same thing and it looks horrible. All of these five I shared with you today, I get consistent performance every day. And like I said, I love them even without primers or setting sprays. So thank you as always so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.